why is the valuation of Ripple 10 times higher than the valuation of Stellar Networks? The market cap of Ripple is 10x higher than the market cap of Stellar Networks. Why? I don't know. It's crazy. I think it should be the other way around, or at least the two should be closer. Let me tell you why. So, first of all, uh, Jed McCaleb was uh, founder of Ripple. He forked it to create Stellar Networks. So the two are very similar platforms. But there are some key differences that I think are important. The first one is uh, Stellar is an open network. Anybody can join and use it. Ripple is a permissioned network. Ripple has to allow you to come in. The Stellar network is free to use. Ripple is charging banks fees to use its network. Um, and so why does that matter? Well, what do, what do you think will grow faster? Something that is open, anybody can come in and it's free? Or something that you have to be let in and there's a fee at the door or ongoing fees to stay in. I, I think Seller can grow faster with its model. Now, another point, I mentioned Jed McCaleb created both. Well, Jed McCaleb, he created this file sharing uh, system peer-to-peer -peer a long time ago called eDonkey. Became one of the biggest file sharing systems in the world. He then created one of the first exchanges on Bitcoin for Bitcoin. Mt. Gox became the biggest in the world at the time. He left it a year before it collapsed. And then he created Ripple, which became one of the biggest cryptocurrencies in the world. And now he's created Stellar. What's the chance he's going to create another one of the biggest in the world? Well, I guess he already has, but I guess my point is to compare. So Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, great guy, been successful, seems smart. I have nothing against him. But how many created the biggest in the world does he have next to his name? You know, and I, I love finding winners who just... Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, whether they create a, a spaceship or a phone or a whatever, it's amazing. And so I love investing with winners. Jed McCaleb looks like one of those. People, one, of that, one of that type of person to me. Um, next is, you know, what, what kind of volume are, are we seeing? What kind of deals are both companies getting and working on. And there's been a lot in the news about Ripple working with banks. There's not a lot of details on what any of that means, what kind of volume that means. And we'll get to in a minute whether about how it affects the value of the coin, but just volume on the network. From the, the biggest deal, I mean, Stellar has had a lot of great big deals that I think when I see them and then I dig in, I go, wow, this is big or this can be really big. But their deal with IBM to me looks huge. They are working with IBM to launch banks onto the platform to facilitate international trade by using the blockchain with the, with the trade contracts and instant payment around the world. This is not only you know, making a, a sort of broken system better, but it's allowing countries to trade to get with each other who were not able to trade before. You know, a, a random country in Africa trying to trade with some small country in Southeast Asia and getting the, 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 the currencies to match up. And, I mean, it's just too difficult. Now it will be able to be done in instantly. With Ripple, sometimes I look at these deals, you know, everyone was very excited. Ripple made a deal with Amex, you know. Ripple's up 30% that day. Um, you know, you look into it, it was like, well, okay, um, if you live in America and you use Amex and you want to send money to somebody in England who is working with Bank Santander, then you can do that on the Ripple Network. As I dug in, I saw the deal looked very narrow. The opposite, I find with Stellar, you look at a deal and it looks big. So we'll see. I don't know everything that's going on with all Ripple's deals, but that's just something I, I feel that I've seen. And if someone, if you have better info out there, or you think, oh, the IBM deal is not going to be that big, or Ripple's actually doing this and that that we don't know about, I don't know how big it is, let me know. Please. I'm not trying to invest for my ego here. I'm trying to pick winners if I have wrong info. 
please share. Another question people talk about is what about the, well, what about the value of the coin itself? You know, uh, whether it's XLM, Stellar, Lumens on Stellar or XRP, the Ripple coin. Um, if just, you know, the, the, the platform, both Ripple and Stellar, it's a platform that allows you to trade anything. You can trade, you know, Korean won for crypto kitties on both of these networks if there are people with those tokens on the platform. You don't have to use the native currency on either platform. And that was always a concern for me on either of platforms and including Stellar. And so I was surprised to see when IBM made the deal. So I thought, and what they've always said is on Stellar, the, uh, the Stellar Lumens can be used as a bridge currency. So with my example, a country in Africa trading with a country in Southeast Asia, neither of them wants each other, other's currency. So they use, they will each trade and hold the Lumens and use that to trade back and forth because then they can use it on this network that they're using. So instead of, hopefully I made that clear. Um, and so I thought, okay, well, that's cool. You know, I, there's going to be a lot of volume with this IBM deal. And on the long tail, people will be using Stellar Lumens. I was surprised, though, to see IBM say that Stellar Lumens will be used on every trade, at least for now. Now, and people talk about, well, when fiat currencies come on, uh, you know, people will use that instead. And I'm not saying that forever Stellar Lumens will be used in every trade on the network. But for now, they are. And if fiat currencies don't get off their ass and join the revolution, I don't know. <laughs> Stellar, car Stellar Lumen, could that become a world currency? Or it, not the world currency, but one that is used and people don't mind holding it at all. And they don't need to use dollars. You know, and right now, the country in Africa trading with the country in Southeast Asia, they would hold dollars. Yeah, because they're usable, right? But those aren't available. Now they'll do lumens. But they don't all really want dollars. They can't necessarily use them in their own countries. So the idea that dollar is immediately going to just become the reserve currency around the world, while the, and they're afraid of the cryptocurrency. Anyways, so... I see a real use for Stellar Lumens. With Ripple, you know, they're, they're working on, they're using Western banks here who have fiat currencies that, and they're trading with each other and they're sort of, and they're telling all the banks, you don't have to use Ripple. I don't hear anything and I haven't seen anything clear about the, the banks using the Ripple network actually using the Ripple coin at all. Now, I'm not saying they're not going to and they won't, but I, I, you know, as opposed, again, comparing to Stellar, I see IBM doing a deal with supposedly, you know, billions of dollars in trade ramping up. I, I, on Reddit, I, there was an AMA. I talked to Michael Dowling. I mean, I posted a question in the AMA. He answered it about volume. You know, it, you know volume is increasing with this deal, but after the first quarter, he expects it to increase significantly. And all those trades will be using the Stellar Lumens. Whereas with Ripple, you know, I, what, I don't hear any stories of any volume. I do see a lot of articles of people asking, well, what is the value of this currency and no one has to use it? And I don't hear anyone that's going to use it. Again, not saying it's going to zero, but why is it 10x more valuable than Stellar? Uh, I don't know. Um, now another thing, the, when, after Jed forked from Ripple, he, you know, they rewrote a lot of the code. Hopefully the, the, the rewrite is better than the original. I'm not a coder. I'm not, I don't know, but you know, he rewrote it. That's usually a good thing, especially with a rock star like Jed. Um, also they redid the consensus algorithm. Now. For those who don't know, you know, the consensus algorithm is the system that uses to keep all of these distributed ledgers updated. Both Ripple and Stellar have confirmations of the state of all accounts every five seconds, which is very fast compared to any other system. It's probably the fastest. Um, but the, the algorithm that comes to that consensus was rewritten 
and has a for, with um, they did it with um, this David Maziris, computer scientist from Stanford University. They have a math proof on their consensus algorithm. Looks rock solid. Um, and it was rewritten. To, I'm guessing it's better than the consensus algorithm at Ripple. This is one of these things that may come into play if there is major scaling um, issues. And, and this gets a little technical and wonky, but it's something to look up. Compare the consensus algorithms on the two if you're a real, you know, techie type and you like that kind of stuff. Um, so the other point is what about, so both platforms have a hundred billion tokens that were pre-mined. And so right now, at this point, Stellar has distributed about 17 billion of their coins, which means they're still holding 83 billion. These numbers are not exact. You can look it up, it's open and everything to see the numbers. But um, so Stellar's holding 83 billion. Well, what are they gonna do with them? And Ripple has given away 34 billion, I think. So that means they're holding 66 billion, <laughs> I hope my math is right. Um, and so there's a, that's an important question. Well, wh what is happening with those coins? Where are they going? And IBM, that was very important to them. I mean, IBM is a big, respected Fortune 500 Dow Industrials company. When they go, they know that they're gonna increase the value. And then who, you know, so all those coins being held, are they just increasing the value for like Jed to run off with it or what? You know, they were very concerned about that. And as they said, this, the, 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 what, what, what is Ripple doing with their coins? They said that the, they said it's very opaque. I mean, you know, it's not clear to them. And Ripple uses that money, those coins, to fund themselves, right? Now, and that's fine, to, you know, Ripple, the people who work there need to make a salary. Um, and by the way, so, I hope we're not going too off topic, but Ripple is a private for-profit company, whereas the Stellar Network Foundation is a non-profit. So, and anyway, so within that profit-seeking company, it's a little opaque of what they can do with the coins not yet issued, and they are openly using those to fund their for-profit company. Whereas Stellar has a non-profit and uh, IBM, IBM approved uh, governance model regarding what they're doing with their lumens. They're not, uh, and they're, you know, the basic goal of the lumen distribution, and Ripple may be doing this as well, is to give them away to partners who will help grow the ecosystem. But it looks like the governance of the tokens that are not yet given away, it looks a little bit more safe with Stellar. I'm not saying Ripple's doing anything wrong, and I'm not worried. I don't think they're going to... It's in their value to, to have a, you know, the Ripple coin maintain its value. So I don't think they're going to do something crazy with it. But again, it's just another point when you're comparing the two. Is Ripple's system 10 times better than Stellar's? Again, at least they should be a little closer together. Um, and I think... Oh... Yeah, uh, the one, one last point, I kind of talked about this with what, uh, you know, the, the, the deal with IBM and how they're doing, working with, but from the beginning, one of the things I really liked about Stellar, and this was especially true, you know, uh, six months or, or longer ago, was just like, you know, we want to actually do something that can really help people. You know, Stellar started, they went down to Nigeria, set up office in Nigeria because Nigeria, Nigeria is mostly has no banking system. Everybody speaks English and has phones. And like, you know, like we can really help people here. As opposed to, you know, the Ripple model is trying to reduce fees for banks so that banks, Western banks can send money to each other at a lower cost. That's great. Nothing against it. But that's a little different than helping people. One story I heard with uh, Stellar Lumens Again, somewhere down in Africa, you know, Wi-Fi, very hard to get. And, you know, what's the cost of Wi-Fi? If you want to have it, you know, for a month, maybe it costs $40, $50. But the, the payment fee 
is like another $20. So, and it's just, they're priced out now. So now, by using Stellar Lumens, they're able to sell Wi-Fi by the hour with no extra fees. So what happens is instead of nobody having Wi-Fi because it's too expensive and you have to have long-term contracts, everybody has access and you know people who only have a little bit of money may buy an hour a week of Wi-Fi. So these are the things that really change lives and make a difference. And I see Stella really focusing on that, not just with their technology, but simply by focusing on the part of the world uh, that that really uh, can be helped by this uh, by this revolution. You know, a lot of people in America are like, hey, what, the, what do I need Bitcoin? What do I need cryptocurrency for? You don't, you know? You have a bank, you got a credit card, you have auto pay, you have online banking. Yeah, you don't, you don't need it. It can help you, and it's coming to the Western world too, but the real difference is made down in, in made in, in some of these other countries, banking the unbanked. And I think Stellar is uh, leading the charge. They're not the only one working on this. I don't know that they're absolute leader in helping the unbanked, but I like that focus as well. So those are my reasons for liking Stellar. I don't dislike Ripple. I think Ripple, you know, I'm not saying they're going to zero and doesn't deserve anything. But why is it 10 times more valuable than Stellar? You tell me. If I've said anything wrong or there's some other point, something I'm missing, let me know. I'm trying to learn here. I'm not trying to have consistency bias, trying to prove I'm right. I want to have the right investment. So if I'm missing something, let me know. But if I don't hear anything, keeping my money on Stellar.